everyone to another another episode of the dn show and i'm really excited about this topic today <laughs> this conversation because i believe it's in so many minds of how do we start an online business from walking out the door or even doing some cleanup in your home and start a business i'm super excited i'm always excited as you know but I have Mr. Angus um, Grant here. And Angus is going to actually teach us a little bit about how do we start an online business, particularly on eBay. So I want to say, you know, I would just not, I don't even know where to start with this one because I'm so, I have so many questions. <laughs> Let's first introduce Angus. And Angus, welcome to the TN Show. Thank you for having me. Um, welcome. Yeah, recent reselling has been a, a part of my life for almost uh, over four years now. And uh, it's it's one of the funnest jobs you can ever have. Uh, I call myself a treasure hunter and my son calls myself and me a, a treasure hunter at the same time. And that's basically what my life is. Finding treasure and then getting rid of it. Well, uh, first of all, um, let's tell them how old your son is. <laughs> he, yeah, Duncan, he, that's my son. He is uh, six years old now. Uh, he's not six and a half. He's only six. <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> oh, yes. He, he doesn't like rounding up or down. He just likes to have one number. It confuses him the rest of the time. Well, I have to say, I do know Duncan. I remember when he was in the stroller and Pampers. I do remember that. And he's grown up so fast and so adorable. So congratulations to you on Larissa on that. You guys are doing a fabulous job. But I could imagine now that he's in school. That you guys can breathe a bit. <laughs> yes, yes. The first time in a year and a half, and hope and fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, he's he's in grade one now, and uh, uh, getting and getting back into into the swing of things. So it's now freedom in the afternoon. Absolutely. So why don't you, before I introduce myself, why don't you introduce yourself and guys a little bit about your history and background, where you came from, and how you gave up that corporate position <laughs> to be in. <laughs> online stay at home that yeah. that created a very full-time successful business because mm -hmm. you basically this is what you survive and live on so if you can do it hey we can do it oh yeah anybody can do it um yeah i, I started off working in the nonprofit sector for quite a long time um and i, I guess you can call it corporate sector now and uh Several years ago, I decided I needed a change. I, I needed to get away from the office. I needed to get away from the desk. And I very much wanted to be with my young son at the time. He would have been three, I guess, at the time. And yeah, when I when I left, I did not have a plan. I did not know what I was going to do. I had no idea. Um, and I kind of fell into reselling through a very odd way. I actually started up as a hobby of collecting beer cans. And I would collect them from the apartments and the the parks and whatnot in my area. And I'd take them over to the beer store and get money that way. And uh, gradually from there, I started realizing people are throwing out stuff. They're, they're, they're throwing out computers and they're throwing out video games. And they're throwing out all kinds of crazy stuff that was perfectly good. Nothing wrong with it. And uh, something in me clicked and just said, you know what? If I can clean this up, if I can fix it, I can probably sell this. And some of it I can sell for some pretty good money. And at the same time, I can have my son with me. He can help me. Uh, he, we can be pirates together looking for treasure around the neighborhood, uh, looking for tre treasure in our own apartment. Uh, and, uh, you know, he can he can spend time with me and he can learn a little bit at the same time. And uh, at the end of the day, when we finish up selling stuff, that means we can kick back and watch some cartoons or, or play army guys or whatever he wants. And I don't have to say I have to go to work or I have to get up early in the morning. Whatever you want to do, buddy, that's me. And uh, that's been a blessing for the, for the past four years almost. It's, oh it's been time with him and okay. to sell stuff on the side. Four years. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. But thank you for sharing that. And for those who don't know me, and for those who do know me, you know I'm always doing something new. <laughs> for those who don't know me, my name is Deanne Oja. And I am... Um, the experiential coach. Let me explain that. I help you to the ex to get the 
feel the experiential breakthrough and the experience that you will have in taking you, your personal life, your business, and everything else around you to the next level. Yes, we have our qualification. I use that through many modalities. I am a master practitioner in NLP and hypnotherapy. Yes, I do timeline therapy as well. I have a signature program called The Elephant in the Room. That's really cool. A lot most of people love it. You get instant results for that. But the guarantee is that you got to do your work as well and be very open. And I'm also a Dow Hands um, practitioner. So I do have healing hands. Yes, I do. And there's many, many, many other things that I do as well. Of course, being radio, TV host, and author, and everything else. So I pretty much can help you whatever you want. I don't classify myself as a life coach, a business coach, a relations coach, a sex coach, all the Duncan. I mean, I keep calling you Duncan. Oh my God, I'm so stuck <laughs> with your son name because I just love him. Angus. It's a great name. We will, it is a good name. We will be starting those sex shows as well, as you know, we were just talking about. So tune in right here for everything. And for those who are joining us, please catch us on your replay and please share this because we're going to have a very interesting conversation. It's going to be fun. But I want people to know in these everyday times, you can do it. I, you know, if he can do it. I can do it. You can do it. And you know, like I said, Angus, we are going. I'm going to be knocking on your door very soon. Trust me on that one. And I want to say hi to everyone out there. Hi, Sue. Thank you for joining us. If you have any question for Angus, please do keep going to call him Duncan. He's so <laughs> cute. We should put a picture of him there. So. Let's talk about, we talked about how it started as a hobby. And what what did Duncan say in all of this? Like, you know, did oh, he, he, he must have thought you were, <laughs> does he have a little, he has a little trolley that he trolleys around? To <laughs> no, no, he's, he, he's a bit lazy on that. Daddy has to carry everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, when, when we started off, I, I think he thought it was a game, you know, uh, we'd be wandering around. Oh, look, there's a bottle. Oh, there's a can, that kind of thing. And then as it, as it changed over to, you know, more actual products that you can sell online and whatnot, um, part of it, he was like, Oh, we found stuff. Do we get to keep it? Is it mine? <laughs> like, and, and I bring home a giant table and table and chairs. And all of a sudden he would think that's his. And I'd have to explain to him, no, but if I sell this, daddy can buy you something and you can get a nice toy for it. So, you know, his eyes broke. I'm like, oh, yes, get more stuff, sell more stuff. I want more toys. Um, and he always gets a kick out of coming with me to, to garage sales or whatnot, because he's always looking out for, for, for different treasures. Like he'll find something like, daddy, you can sell this. Oh, yeah, but yeah, that's right. Or daddy, can I buy this for myself? And um, he, he really enjoys it. Like, I think when he goes and talks to his friends, if he talks to his friends, he doesn't tell me, but uh, it's, it's always daddy's a treasure hunter. This is this is daddy's job. Like everybody else, he's an off. They work off office jobs and whatnot. But his description is daddy's a treasure hunter. So I think he gets a real kick out of it, and he loves seeing whatever I bring home. Um, sometimes it's not interesting, and sometimes it's <gasps> I want it. Uh, but he, he learns a balance. Well, I believe that we have to do a collaboration because I have a lot of books and all these things, and I didn't know what to do with them. There's a lot of things I have. I told you before, it's it's amazing. So here's the thing. What, here's a silly question. There's no question, silly. No. You live in an apartment. You don't have a house, correct? <laughs> so when you say you bring home a table and a chair, I mean, we're talking about small tables, side tables. We're not talking about big no, furniture. No. I'm talking about um, dining room What table. are the restrictions? I know you have some restrictions because I'm sure Larissa is not going to be happy. She wouldn't be. <laughs> As she said, you can't move in the apartment anymore. You're still looking for spaces. And you probably would have a two-bedroom, yep. possibly. Yeah. How? Where do you keep these things? You have to be very, 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 very organized. And uh, tubs and boxes are your friend. Um, you you don't... You know, I, I, I also have a balcony, but you're not allowed to use that for that kind of storage. So everything basically has to stay inside. So everything... You got to be really careful. You try not to buy too much or to find too much stuff. You got to kind of restrict yourself on that. And you got to find things that you know are going to move or you find really small things. Um, but even in the beginning when I was bringing home dining room tables or I even had a giant hutch. Wait, like wait, stop, 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 stop. 
Did yeah. you say you bought home dining room tables in the apartment? With chairs. Where did you put it? Uh, the table I broke down because, uh, you know, oh. you can unscrew them. And the chairs I just stacked up in a corner. Um, this was in the beginning before I had a lot more inventory, so I didn't have to worry about too much. But And those, those kind of things, you price it right, they sell fast. So you always got to keep that in mind. You don't want to get a big, ugly table that nobody's going to buy. You want to find something nice that somebody is going to want to buy quickly. Um, and fortunately, those things, they would sell within a day or two. Oh, so that's never that big of a deal. Do you refurbish them as well? Have you no. refurbished anything? No. I, I clean it. Uh, I air it out. But uh, I have absolutely no skill <laughs> when it comes to it comes to that kind of thing. Like, I could paint it or whatnot. But I'm always honest. And I just go and say, it is what it is. This is what it looks like. You can buy it. And you can take it home. And a lot of people have bought it and said, I'm going to refurbish it myself. Um, I've even had people offer to uh, be hired on as refurbishers. Uh, but mm -hmm. for me, I'm all about the quick flip. Just get it as is, get it clean, get it out the door. Uh, if you want to do an art project with it, knock yourself out. But I, I, don't, I don't have the time or the space to do that kind of thing. My sister who lives in the States, she used to um, buy some cool stuff from the flea market. I mean, really cool. I, I can't even begin to imagine some of these things. It's incredible. She lives out in Long Island, so you could imagine there's a difference there when you get to New York City and Long Island. And I've seen a chair she would pay like a dollar or five dollars or something, and rocking chair and some tables that's glass, and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And she has no skill, but guess what? She took a sandpaper and she sandpapered it herself, which I don't even know how she figured that one out. What I believe because we are we also had a furniture factory back growing up, yeah. so we were involved in that in a sense. That's what we did. We didn't really do the work. Um, however, it's, um, and then she just took some varnish and she varnished it and you will not tell the difference, but it's beautiful furniture stuff that I would actually have to as well to tell the truth. What are the price ranges that you normally would see when you're on, because you're on eBay, right? Typically yeah. eBay. Are you in any other platform? Uh, I do Facebook marketplace every now and then Kijiji and Craigslist. Um, there's several other, there's, oh maybe about 20 other websites out there that you can do this kind of thing on. Um, the only other one that I'm on right now is Bonanza. Uh, but there's so many others, uh, Depop, Macari, Poshmark. Um, and you even have different websites for specific things like records or books or that kind of thing. So it really depends on what you sell and how far you're willing to send it. Uh, but you must have done lots of research on this. I mean, you're talking about, I've heard about Bonanza. The mm -hmm. name, not the movie, mm -hmm. not the show. I'm talking about the, the I've heard that yeah. name. Don't know much about it, but you really have to, it's like me looking into um, editing and so forth. I just discovered another editing software just by somebody mentioned something in conversation. They're just like, oh, what's this? And it sounds pretty cool. It sounds pretty simple, but you can edit through um, text, the script, not so much the cutting. And it, it's phenomenal. So I can't wait to dabble in that a bit. And I'm hoping it's not too technical because I don't want technical. Um, but what's the price ranges you see? And what type of profit do you look? You don't have to give specifics, but what type of profit are you looking at if somebody who wants to start an online business? And for those who are just joining us, catch us on the replay. I'm with Angus Grant. And Angus went from corporate, not for profit, straight to one day picking up bottles and cans, beer bottles and cans with his six year old son. Or well, maybe it was between four, five, six year old at the time. Now he's six. He's not six and a half. He's six. <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand Duncan to know what I'm mm -hmm. saying. And he started an online business and this is what he's doing full time. So if you're thinking about doing an online business, listen to this conversation, share with someone. It's another form of income and it's actually replaced your income, yeah. but it's a lot of work. And oh, yeah. So let's go back to the question before and had, and we'll talk about what's the price ranges you look at or the profit range you're looking at. Are we talking about shipping? Because you also include the shipping. Um, uh, so you, you add the shipping on to, so yep. they include in the price. So it takes care of all of that. So it's not coming out from your pocket as yeah, well, no. right? There's, um, a, there's, there's a technique to all this madness to tell you the truth. <laughs> you have to, even when I'm selling the book, you can't speak yeah. You can ship a book to, to Canada, you can ship a book to the States, or you ship a book to India, or you ship a book to, 
with um, Europe, we're talking a ship book to Trinidad. There's all different shipping fees, and you mm -hmm. have to. So I just put like a general amount, and if it's less than you know whatever, but usually a general amount um, to make sure it covers because it goes by size, it goes by weight, and it goes by country and so forth. Especially, mm -hmm. I listen. I actually was going to send a book to Pakistan. The book cost me, the book is very powerful and, uh, you know, uh, very, very powerful. And I bought it at um, wholesale from our center. So it was more wholesale, but it, it's worth more than that on Amazon and so forth. And it was costing about $50 to ship to Pakistan, like almost five times as much to go to Pakistan. And I was like, forget it. <laughs> it's like, forget it. <laughs> Um, and the guy said, no, no, don't worry about it. I was like, okay, the next time I come to Pakistan, I'll, I'll actually bring it for you. I actually was in Pakistan. I hope to go back at some point in time. So what are the, pri the price range and profit margin we're looking at? Because you have to have a lot of profit. I mean, considerable depends on what it is in order for you to survive and pay your bills. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like it's, it really depends on what I have. Um, when I find something for free, and a lot of the times when I was starting off, all of it was free. Uh, the kitchen tables and that kind of thing, that was all free. Um, I would always just go for the market price, you know. Uh, you know, uh, two, two wooden chairs, 60 bucks. Off you go. Uh, but as you start investing money into whatever it is you're getting, uh, the common rule of thumb is if you can't double your money, probably not worth doing it. Because uh, there are there are fees involved, there are expenses and whatnot. Uh, there's time. Uh, there's all kinds of things that you have to worry about whether or not it's worthwhile. So if you can't double your money, that's really not not much of a point. Um, you know, there are exceptions. You know, if if you can if you can sell something repeatedly and you can make twenty percent, twenty five percent off of it, then that's okay because that's guaranteed money. Um, but the bigger the object and the more the more more expensive it is to get and whatnot. Then you want to go and say, can I go and get 50%? Can I get double it? And the great thing is, is most things, uh, the prices that you can get them at, you can get triple them. You can get, you can double your money. You can get 200% return. You can get all kinds of returns. Mm -hmm. There are some very surprising items that I've sold that I had a thousand percent return. Yeah, I, you know, you, of course, we had talked about this before. Max sold, you know, Max sold, and there's certain things. It's an online auction, and I have a lot of things on Max sold, mm. a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really about you know, sometimes you end up with some stuff, but most of it was, you know, things I wanted to use for the studio and so forth. And but there's certain things that people will not um, like paintings and and um, glassware and electronics and um tools and you can get for one dollar yeah one dollar if you can flip it and then the tools are usually because they come from estate auctions and so forth they're older so that means they're more durable the only problem you have is whether it works or not but some people like to buy these things and fix it up for it to work yeah. that's another thing as well and i always say when i saw some of the things like oh my goodness if i had a space for this if i had a a a, a storage for this it would be kind of cool and i've thought about doing that with a friend and said no he's a handy person and i said maybe this is something we should look into but it's where you're going to put it because when you the auction it, if it ends today you got to pick it up in two days yep and where you're going to put it so tell us some of the the non so nice experiences that you may have had in doing this business <laughs> Um, they, I mean, it's not all smooth. It's not all profit. No. I mean, I'm sure Larissa sometimes wants to scream. <laughs> you have to ask for that. But um, at times, because it can be challenging and you have to be focused on. And the, how many hours of work do you do? Uh, spend on uh, this. Is it? That do I you spend, do that? Really like, on a daily basis, it's minimum six hours. Um, I would love to be able to put in an eight hour day though. Um, but I also have Duncan that I have to worry about. So generally speaking, six and six to seven hours a day. But that's, that's a lot of hours for this. Yeah. What's well, a full time and job. That's, it is. And that's research that's shipping, going to the store, anything to work on the business and mm -hmm. in the business is what mm -hmm. it is. 
Yep. So I guess Larissa sometimes is like she reached a point. I know she reached a point. She just shuts her mind off. I know that <laughs> she just shuts her mind off, but she <laughs> understands this is what you're doing. It's also, and then you're doing a couple of things. It's getting time to spend with your son, your home. You don't have to worry about it. And you get it. You're having fun with this. And again, coming back to what are some of the challenges you ran into for those who are starting an online business? Well, let me, and also if you could incorporate that answer into where would you start? You know, uh, SD or eBay or where do you, where would you recommend now that you know all these platforms, where would you recommend for a beginner to start? Um, well, let's see where to start. I think eBay is a good spot to get your toes wet. Um, it is next to Amazon, the biggest uh, reseller in the world. Um, so it is a great place. If you want, if you want to do international, if you want to do anything that involves shipping, you want to go through eBay just to learn. Uh, you don't necessarily have to stay there. You can move on to different platforms and whatnot. Uh, but to learn, it's a great one. It, it, it's the grandfather. So mm -hmm. all the all the technicalities, all the issues, all the policies and whatnot, that's the place to go and learn it. Every other platform is slightly different, but generally speaking, they base a lot of what they do off of what eBay has done in the past. Um, but it, it, it also depends on your comfort level because, again, eBay is probably easier to learn just because of, of its familiarity. Um, most people have at least shopped on eBay in one way or another. So they do I have haven't. some. No. Well, you have to go no. to my store and you have to buy something. I want to sell you something. I don't want to buy nothing. I want to sell you things. I'm, I'm not kidding you. We are going to, you may not want this, but I'm going to say, Angus, here's some stuff. Sell it for me. That's as much as I can say. Because I don't know what to do with this stuff. <laughs> and here's the thing. I don't give away. I don't throw out anything because, believe it or not, mm. and even if you look at these panels here, these were gotten, I bought this many moons ago. And I had a beautiful disco ball that came with it too as well. But I don't know what happened to disco ball. Beautiful disco ball. And I'm still mm about that. But these came from a garage sale. I believe it was. Nice. And, you know, I have had, I have other ones as well. Those are bigger. Those are lighter. But I don't throw them out because you never know when you're going to be using it. It was in storage. I have another one. It's um, a wicker ones as well and so forth. And they come in handy. Trust me, they come in handy <laughs> when you need them. Because if you have to go and buy something like this now, it's, I don't know. And it's like a, a hit and a miss. And you'll be, you'll be surprised what you can end up finding. And it came from a good source. It, the person owned a restaurant. So the stuff was actually really good, some of the things I got from there. Right. So uh, I just happened to be in Woodbridge and just happened to be driving a good couple. Of, this is about, this is probably about 2015. And those days I would check for things we could use in the studio because I had a, like 2,500 foot studio, a square feet studio at the time. And we had different um, stages we could use. So basically that's what we did. So yes, coming back to all of this, yes, I don't want to buy anything. I want to sell the thing to get rid of it. That's <laughs> what I want to do. So well, we'll have a conversation about that as well. Well, here, here's the thing. When I started off on eBay, the first thing that I did was become a buyer. Um, you have to remember this. When you're on, on these platforms, they have uh, ratings on each person mm -hmm. that's on there. They, have, uh, they get feedback. And the easiest way to earn feedback is to buy something because the seller is mm -hmm. always providing feedback back to these people. And when you become a seller and somebody looks at your store and they go and say, well, uh, I want to buy from this person, but are they reliable? Are they going to give me some, a mm -hmm. good quality product? Uh, are they going to are they going to ship it on time? Or not? I want to see if they've got a high enough positive rating. And by being a buyer, you buy something, and you can just automatically check that off. You can say, yes, he's a pos he's got positive feedback. That means he's somebody that I can trust. Um, oh, okay. So, like, I started off buying recipes online for a penny. Just just to get your foot wet for just this to in get the my process. Feet wet, just to get some feedback. And, you know, I got some very nice biscuit recipes out of it. They'd send me a PDF and that's all, and that's it. Um, but it would get me feedback and get them feedback and they'd get a penny from me. Um, oh, so, so wait, 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 wait. Okay. So that's thought. So I have here, it's somewhere around here, um, my book. You know my book, right? You probably should know my book. I think Larissa has a copy of the book too. If you don't know, go read it. So, um... <laughs> 
So if you're talking about the book, because I just started, you know, on a couple um, platforms like Convert Kit and um, SD, I'm looking at SD. I said that right or wrong, who knows? Um, into starting that as well, but there's so many restrictions. And when someone goes on, goes in there and you start reading all the protocols, I was looking at a tutorial on uh, YouTube about it. And they had the pros and the cons and it kind of scared the life out of me mm-hmm. and saying such. So, you know, it's um, maybe you should do a tutorial to a YouTube saying some of the things to with these platforms that will help. But in terms of when you talk about PDF, Yes, we do have the book in PDF. And yes, you do some platforms. You It's only digital and you cannot sell an actual product. So, you know, that's maybe something I can start off with because it really is interesting to me, you know, when somebody tells me something, it kind of intrigues me now. So I go and check it out and see. Because here's the thing, my book used to be on Amazon when I first started. Mm-hmm. And Amazon didn't, hold, didn't have the inventory. I had the inventory. But I still had to sign it. I still had to ship it. I still had to do everything. And nobody, everybody bought it through me. They didn't buy it through Amazon. So I sent about six copies to a girlfriend in LA. And um, she got the package. She did get the envelope, but there was no books in it. Ooh. But she still got the envelope. Ooh. True story. And apart from that, what happened was they, whoever stole it, and I sort of tracked it back. To where it came from, um, who stole it, more or less, a company, how they get like a third party and so forth. Mm-hmm. And they were selling it together with my book. And so I'm not kidding you. And it was for like a ridiculous price. It was, it was stolen. So, and it was all signed, by the way. They were all signed. So I took it off of Amazon because I didn't really use it. And Amazon, what's the, um, now these, these platforms do take a percentage no you have to understand that. So which one is some of like 25%, 35%? Why? Uh, I don't know what it is. I'd say the most expensive one is probably Amazon. They they take quite a big cut. Um, eBay do. takes about 13%. That's pretty good. Yourself. Yeah. That's yeah, really, not really good. Like 13% on that. On... Yeah. Oh, so okay. So quickly, give us five tips. And you know, it can be pros, pros and cons. Well, let's go with the pros first. <laughs> pros and cons. Or pros. Well, pros are you make your own hours. Mm-hmm. Um, you get to declutter your own home first uh, before you declutter it again. Uh, so you get rid of all I your own that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You can make as much money as you want. Uh, so you can, you know, you, you can make five bucks a month or you can make uh, $50,000 a month. Uh, really depends on what you want to spend and what you want to put into it. Um, you get to do what you, you get to play with whatever you like. Um, some people like clothes, so they get to be with clothes all the time. Um, I like to I like toys, so I'm surrounded by toys all the time. And I'm learning about new toys. Um, you also get to learn. Um, I am always learning about new things, new new products to sell, new companies or old companies for that matter. You're learning the history of things, uh, where they came from. Um, you know, I, I had to learn about the Nike logo one time because I found some 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 uh, Nike items from the 70s, and I had to learn all about the history of the logo for there. So that's always a fun thing as well. And also, there is a reseller community out there. Uh, so depending on how involved you get, you get to meet a lot. You you get exposed to an awful lot of people uh, through YouTube or through Instagram or TikTok or or whatever, uh, but also in the local community as well. Like I've been to certain to garage sales and to thrift stores and whatnot, and you'll see groups of resellers congregating there and and sharing tips and sharing stories and just hanging out and be, becoming friends. Uh, so it is in many ways another way to be social. Uh, mm-hmm. if, you, if you so choose some of us are hermits and we just hate people entirely and so we just stay <laughs> hidden away in our apartment but uh you it, it depends on what you want there so those those are the the, the pros for sure um yeah for cons uh you know if it, it is very easy to go crazy um oh people... i know that <laughs> oh trust me i know that when you yeah. go into auctions and and thrift shops oh. and I yeah. have carpet and so forth that I don't even use anymore. And I keep giving family members and mm-hmm. uh, things like that. Because again, when I had the studio, 
this particular one, I also had like a thousand square feet, a second studio. So you want to be interchangeable. I had literally got at um, the Habitat for Humanity in Markham. I got a, but it's not push. It's an Indian rug, but I thought it was Persian from 85, 1985 or something yeah. like that. And because the tag was still on for the gentleman who had cleaned it. I got it for $100. And believe it or not, um, it's worth over five thousand dollars. I still have the rug, beautiful rug, beautiful rug. But the thing is, unbelievable heavy. <laughs> beautiful rug. Don't know what they're going to do with it, but I have it, the friends. So I have a lot of thing. I was just picking up stuff like crazy. So I get that. Yeah. I understand that. So yes, you can go crazy. Some some people call it their death pile. Some people call it their money pile. Uh, but I don't think you're going to find a reseller alive that does not have a pile of stuff that they just bought and for, through one reason or another, they just never get around to actually selling off or to listing really. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, I can definitely say I have that as well. Um, it's whether or not you can actually control yourself and say, nope, I'm not going to buy. I'm going to try and sell uh, or I'm going to spend this month and just list and list and list and whatever. So it can get very dangerous and that's that's where the uh uh conflicts at the house can occur can occur you keep mm -hmm. on buying stuff and you're not selling stuff you're you're not a reseller you're a hoarder uh so mm -hmm. you always got to keep on you know bring stuff in get stuff out you have to flip it you have to flip yeah. it but you put the yeah. intention when you have to flip it so you yeah. become very in tuned and you listen to the, I'm going to say this funny thing. You listen to the energy and say, come pick me, come pick me. Somebody's <laughs> waiting for me. <laughs> you know, it's, um, but again, for, so as we wrap up, what would you say to someone who's really seriously thinking about how they can make some money now, mm. right this moment, um, just what they have to get and, you know, what, what they expect probably what you put into it, you get out of it. But as a casual person, I was starting an online business through eBay, like you say, to start eBay, what can be the return to expect? What would be comfortable for starting off? I think that that if you are just starting off, you're probably not going to make much money because you're going more than likely to be dealing with the stuff that you have in your house. So you're not going to have very, you're not going to have much unless you're a hoarder, or like unless you got a giant collection of stuff, you're not going to make much. But if you become serious at it, and once you get that taste, once you first hear the first ka-ching on your phone, uh, you know, get get the eBay app for, for that. Once you hear that first ka-ching, that's the gratification that you need to just keep on going and keep on going. And a lot of people try it for three years and they drop away. Um, but you just gotta keep yourself motivated and and just keep on trying, you know, try different things, try different objects. Uh, don't be afraid to tell people that you're a reseller and just keep going and, and do your research. Uh, research is key. Um, I started off watching YouTube and there are all kinds of resellers on YouTube that I, that I started watching and they are able to teach you what to do. Um, and you know, you, you make mistakes, but just don't be afraid of it. Like don't, don't spend $10,000 on stuff, start small and work your way up, you know, build your confidence. Um, but anybody can do it. You know, there, there's people have been doing it for over, you know, online for over 20 years and people have been reselling for hundreds of years. That's so true. It's not, that's true. It's, it's for not that shops. You know, it, mm. Yeah. And if it, if it scares you doing the shipping, then start with Facebook, do, do local stuff. You know, I, I was doing local reselling for the first year, really, before I decided just to go and try the shipping because the shipping really scared me. But when you reach out to people and when you go on Facebook or whatever, you learn, oh, Canada Post, not the cheapest way to send something to Pakistan. True. Uh, your $50 <laughs> dollar book, I can probably find a cheaper way to send it there. Because uh, there's, because to be perfectly honest, I use you, the U.S. Postal Service all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a much cheaper way to send stuff over there. Um, but, you know, reach out to people and go and learn. And YouTube has been without it i wouldn't have been able to do this i wouldn't be able to survive I wouldn't absolutely learn learn. absolutely i'm beginning to see that for a lot of things on youtube like you can find everything there so yeah. um um <laughs> definitely so so you know um is there anything you wanted to last words you wanted to share or leave with our audience who, who just catching us you got to listen to this because there's so much to learn 
you know, Angus, we will be having a, you and I will have a conversation how to figure out how to get all of this because, you know, the thing about it, we invested in this, we give so much away. I have, like I said, lots of books and all those things like that. And I really don't like it because, you know, people gave it to me. Some people, just people just gave it, I mean, not, some people I don't even know the people, but I got it for different reasons. It just mm -hmm. came into my hands. But there's so many things that you have and you paid for it. So somebody else will pay for it. Definitely so. And like I said, you know, according to Duncan, pretty much, you know, it's someone, it's a treasure. We're going treasure hunting. So you can go treasure <laughs> hunting in here and you have some cool stuff. I've given things away like um, speakers, wireless speakers, you know, things like that. Uh, brand new, never really used to friends and so forth. And because, you know, equipment, technology, I have lots of, I have lots of mics here, good mics. And I, I, XLR mics. Nowadays, that stuff is valuable. Um, it is valuable. It is valuable. I have a mixer, Behringer mixer. I have all these things here. So maybe we will have a conversation about that, how to, to how we should do this uh, type sure. of thing. Anyway, so I want to, um, like I said, sorry, any words of wisdom before we, we leave here? Because it's very interesting and down the road, and maybe one day you can show us in the process how it's done. Uh, oh, by the way, which um, POS system do you use? Do you use for payments? Do you use like, Stripe or do you use PayPal? Uh, with what? eBay, they, they used to use PayPal, but they actually have what's called managed payment now. So they actually take the money and then send it directly to your bank account now. Uh, each platform is a bit different, though. And it's, does that seem to be user-friendly for you? And it's accommodating? Yeah, yeah they, I've been doing it for about a year now, and it's mm -hmm. it, it hasn't had any problems. You don't you, you might have to wait a day or two before the money is in your bank account, but beyond that, no, nothing, no, no, no problem so far. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question before you give us a five. What's the lowest you got and what's the highest you returned for all these years you've been doing that? If you want to share. Uh, well, I took a loss. I, I sold something for 75 bucks, but because of the cost and everything, I lost $5 on it. So I was minus $5 on the sale. Oh, my God. I guess, <laughs> like, seriously, I wasn't talking about that. Okay, but it's a loss. A loss is a it loss. Is, it is a loss. I, I always try to make a profit, even if it's a couple No, of but it wasn't a loss. Profit. You got a big lesson on that one. I show for $5. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, did I learn about shipping on that one. Um, and the highest return that I've made, uh, was actually those Nike. They were, uh, 1970, uh, era socks that I bought for three ninety nine per pair. And each one of those I sold for $75. $3.99? No, no, no. Three, $3 and 99 cents. And I turned yeah. each pair into $75. So yeah, that's why I said $3.99. So, yeah. And it was used. It was worn. It was used. No, they, they, they were brand new, but some of them had stains and whatnot. Like they were 50 year old socks, really. But they all yes. sold within a day. Yeah. Because people, you know, like I said, somebody has treasure. If you can just leave us with some foods of wisdom before we wrap up here. And I want to thank you so much for those who are joining yeah. us here with. Angus Grant, who was talking about online business, how it went from picking up bottles, beer bottles and cans with his son to a full-time business that he's having fun and still getting time to spend with his little double Duncan. <laughs> yeah, basically, don't be afraid. Um, it's a learning process. There is a learning curve, but don't be afraid and don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, jump, just jump in and try it and you know, you might not like it, but a lot of people are going to love it. And it's it's fun and it's it's a great thing to try out even just on, on part time um, and just keep on learning. But I definitely would reach out to you. I'm not joking about that one. And those who want to contact Duncan, you know, it's at Instagram, double Duncan Treasures. You know, the social media part is what scares me so much because it's not scary in a sense, but it's a job and it's own. there's so much work to be done and you constantly have to do that. That, that alone is a job on its own. Oh yeah. It, <laughs> it's the, something I just jumped into. Okay. I have enough trouble with the rest of stuff that I'm doing here as well. And for those who are actually want to reach out to myself, it's, um, you know, it's a DN of course, but it's in for the experiential coach.com. So I want to thank you for that as well. But Angus, I want to say thank you so much for being here with us and sharing this little treasure 
And I know you and the most important thing out of all of this, you get to do what you want to do and see your son grow up and have fun with him. And I know he's such a smart little guy in his little karate outfit. And every, yes, I do see all that from time to time in school and, and so forth. And, you know, he's just, they grow up so fast. So I applaud you for yep. being that dedicated father. And, you know, you and Larissa are doing an amazing job with him as well right. and who knows you know he'll have his own little account just now as sure oh by the way when he finds a treasure i hope that money goes into his account when he finds oh, yeah. a treasure oh yeah he, he, I, I pay I, him for, for his services <laughs> i can imagine and he expects it and he asks for it so i'm sure knowing him sometimes yeah well you know what i'm saying how the way he asks for it type of thing he gets it probably in something else but he oh, yeah. you know he's expecting something for his work right <laughs> that's a way of training them for very young to understand that it's a value for something you want something that's a value and you have to work for it yep. so I'll do this to you and i just want to say thank you so much and for all of those who are really thinking about starting an online business start you know angus recommends you start with ebay and um that's probably the best place to start to learn but yes there's going to be ups and downs and ups and downs and Maybe there's other conversation. Do you write any blogs or vlogs? Well, not so much maybe blogs, but more blogs about any of this. I wish I had time. I've honestly been considering doing it, starting a YouTube channel myself, but it's just getting the time to do it. Well, here's the thing. You got to just do it. Put the thing aside and just do it. True enough. Yeah, just do it and send it to us. Okay. <laughs> That's what it is. So again, Angus, thank you so much. Angus Grant. And, you know, definitely check him out at the, you know, Instagram at Double Duncan Treasures. And it's a pleasure. It's great seeing you. It's, I remember the first time I met you and your lovely wife and your baby was a baby at the time. Long time ago. A long, it, was, it was six years ago. Because mm. I was, he's six, Something he's like that, yeah. almost six. Yeah, six years ago at uh, downtown at that flag raising. So I want to say thank you so much for joining us. And for everyone who's been joining us, so catch us in replay. Send this to a friend. Think about it. If you have a question, go put your comments in there. And, you know, Dunk, um, keep calling him Duncan. Angus <laughs> is going to look into there because and maybe respond or send some comments on and so forth. And if you have any questions, I know I have a lot of questions. And I'm seriously thinking about how do I get removed? I don't want to say get rid because you don't want to get rid of something. If you're going to move it forward you want to move it with a good energy and good love and grace that you've sent it to someone else who they will bring more joy and pleasure to them even if they want to reset it back whatever they want to do that's totally up to them but however there's so much you can do so start checking in your house for those little treasures if not call duncan he'll tell you which is a treasure <laughs> definitely <laughs> so so until next time at the end show this is dn oja and my guest I'm just going to say, you know, thank you all so much for joining us. Tell us about your success on the um, the online business. And if you this inspired you to start a business, please let us know. If you have any feedback, you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let us know, okay? So thank you so much again, Angus. And until next time on the DN Show, this is DN and Angus saying have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.